Now I've been reviewing a lot of laptops that have been excellent, but they've all just had integrated graphics. But here, finally from Honor with their Magic Book 14, we have the option to get this model here with an RTX 2050. It's got four gigabytes of DDR6 RAM, and while it's not a gaming monster of a laptop, it's not really meant for gaming, but it can do a little bit of light gaming, but it's more for productivity, for people that do things like CAD work, 3D editing, and of course, video editing. It's all gonna be boosted with of course the CUDA cores on this and NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 2050. Now this model, while just being 14 inches, has a good weight to it, it's 1.57 kilos, and the screen resolution is 2160 by 1440p. It's all powered by the Intel Core i5, the 12500H. Now it's clocked up to the power limit that is, a 70 watts in its power boost mode. It has 12 cores and 4.5 gigahertz is the maximum turbo. It's quite a monster considering the size of this. It's paired out with 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and it does have a PCI 4.0 spec SSD which is 512 gigabytes. Wi-Fi AX and a 75 watt hour battery and because this is the RTX 2050 model, it's got a beefier power supply to it. So a Type-C power supply that can charge it at 135 watts, which is a lot. So it will fully charge in just 80 minutes, this laptop. So let's take a look at the build quality now. So very nice top on it here, brushed alloy. We've got Honor and it can be opened up one-handed not a problem as you can see there. And then we're presented with a very nice keyboard for a 14 inch laptop. So you see that we do have half sized arrow keys. We've got a function lock button so you don't always have to hold down function. And then for example, use the media controls here at the top. You can just simply lock that in. It's backlit as you can see right now. So that is the backlight on the first level. It's off right now. That's the first. And I'll just turn off the light so you can see what it looks like that it's relatively bright there. And what I like about it is it's evenly distributed. There's no uneven patchy parts. And if you're looking at it, of course, at a bit of an angle, you won't really be blinded by it either. You can see it's not overly bright, but it's enough that you can make it out in the cabin of an aircraft. So our power button right here also acts as a fingerprint reader. So there's a capacitive one and you can use that to scan in with Windows Hello. So Windows Hello just works with the fingerprint reader. Unfortunately, the camera, the HD webcam doesn't support Windows Hello. And then our touchpad, nice size to it. It's not overly large, but for a 14 inch tablet, it's very good. The palm rest is all alloy right here, supports gestures, finer movements. It's very accurate. You don't have the cursor jumping about all over the place. So it's a good combination with a nice keyboard to type on with about 1.5 millimeters of travel good touchpad, I really don't have any complaints. It's high quality and very nice to use. On the left side of the Magic Book 14, we have two Type-C ports. Now they're full spec ones, so that means they do run display out on both of them, and you can get up to 8K, 30 hertz, I believe. I'm able to run 4K, 120, no problem. Status LED, so it's flashing when charging, and charge time is only about 80 minutes. It's very quick. We get 135 watt charging with this model here and 80 with the model that doesn't have the dedicated GPU because I've got the RTX 2050 in this. So both of the ports can charge and that's good. Imagine you accidentally damage one of the ports. Well, you can still charge with the other. So you've got a backup there basically. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support. Quality out of this is very good. It's nice clean audio. There's no horrible static over it, no interference or anything like that. Then on the right, we've got a, of course, normal type A port here. So great that they've made this decision so you can easily plug in a mouse or USB pen drive and not have that problem of having to use a dongle or an adapter. So we do have here a HDMI 2.0. So it's only 4K 60, but that's not a problem because the two type C ports will output 4K up to 120 Hertz and even 8K 30. Then our laptop weight, well, it's 1.57 kilos, so just over one and a half kilos, considering it's got a dedicated GPU, a lot of copper in here, the two coolers, I don't think it's too bad of a weight. Now, it's not super lightweight, but it's an acceptable travel weight and definitely a great travel size at 14 inches. So we've got the fans in here. This is the intake grill, so a lot of fresh air can get through. 
downwards firing speakers and some rubber feet on the bottom. Then up the front there is a cutout so you can easily open it and we've got two microphones right here. Now I do like this location. I think it's better than having the mics left or right of the camera because here of course they are closer to you so you do get better microphone quality. So the display, it has reasonably sized bezels, top and bottom. They're not bad for a 14 inch notebook. So we have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. The resolution is 2160 by 1440p. IPS, fully laminated, covered with glass. Up the top here, that is our little webcam. So it's an HD webcam. Now the hinge does feel very good and it has a, a bit of a lip to it, but it doesn't flex it. It feels really quite a strong screen and the way they've done it, it's optically bonded means that of course it's going to be a little bit more stronger than just simply having a matte screen here. However, saying that, I would have preferred to have a matte display. I think a matte display would have looked a little better for the reflections and everything. And because it's glass, I often keep tapping it thinking that it's supporting touch, which it does not. Color coverage here is, well, sRGB 99%, NTSC is 69%, Adobe RGB is a decent 75%, and P3 is also 75%. The brightness is 319 nits, what I've measured with the Spider X Pro. So indoors, it does look good. It is a bright screen, vibrant screen, and overall really no complaints apart from it's glossy, it's glass, but you can fix that with an anti-glare screen protector at least. This Magic Book 14 does come with 16 gigabytes of RAM. We almost get all of it usable to us. There is a tiny portion that is dedicated to the Iris graphics. So there is no 32 gigabyte option. That would be good to see. But I'm really happy we do have dedicated graphics with this model, which, which is optional, that I do have that model as mentioned there at the start. So Windows 11 Home Single Language Edition here. That means I don't think you can actually store language packs. It just comes with the language that you order it with. So do bear that in mind. And our RAM, that 16 gigabytes, it is running in dual channel and it's DDR5 spec and it's running at 4.8 gigahertz. So it is very quick. So the whole laptop is super snappy and fast. And I'll just show you some synthetic benchmarks that you can compare to your own tech, your own current laptop. So it's great to see we've got a Samsung half a terabyte SSD. It's not actually a port of 512 terabytes there, but no, it's gigabytes. PCIe full speed, you can see very good speeds there. Really quick drive. And it's great, great that they did not actually go with a PCI 3 model, even though the slot, of course, does support it. Now, I have a couple of synthetic benchmarks here. I'll just show you Cinebench, just to report on that speed of the chipset. So it's the Core i7 and, sorry, i5, the 12500H. It's a very powerful chipset. As you can see from this result, it's really quite good. Maximum turbo is 4.5 gigahertz. It has 12 cores 16 threads, yes, 16 threads in total. And they have configured it to up to 70 watts. Now we do have a power mode. So if you press function then P, you'll see it's gone into the smart mode. So that's basically a balanced mode. And then power mode is pushing up those power limits for us so we can just get out the maximum performance out of it. So there are a few more other synthetic benchmarks that I'll just quickly go over. Uh, this one here is the OpenCL score. So it gets 50,000 using that RTX 2050 graphics, of course. Now, if you use the integrated graphics, it's about 19,000 points. So you can see we're well over double the performance of integrated graphics having that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2050. And I'll get a little bit more onto that particular GPU soon. So Geekbench 5 scores, again, very good performance here. Really strong performance when it comes to the multi-core score. And considering that this is a 14-inch laptop, it's packing quite a bit of power. So a couple of gra graphics benchmarks. Time Spy, you'll see that it's getting a very good score here. So just over 4,000 for the RTX 3050, sorry, 2050 is not a bad score at all. Now that is kind of similar, but it's a little bit lower to an RTX 3050, which is another GPU with the same architecture, but this one's just clocked a little bit lower. Uh, Firestrike Extreme, over 5,000 points. This in fact is a higher score than what I got with the Xiaomi Redmi Book. The Redmi Book 15 Pro with uh, actually a better chipset, but the same GPU scored uh, 4,900. So this is a little faster here, which is, Great to see, of course.
For included software, there is no bloatware. So there's no horrible McAfee virus on here that takes you about like five goes to uninstall. No, you do get this Nahemic. Okay, that is there running in the background. That's just to do with our audio. It's audio software. It's it's not bloatware. And then on a PC manager. Now PC manager, you have this option. You've got uh, quite a few good things in here. If you do own other devices, like one of their tablets or their phones, you have Tablet collaboration mode, so you can just have multi-screen collaboration. You can drag and drop files with on a share too. That's quite good. And you've got phone collaboration and even with your TV. Okay, so you can project that. That's just using like mirror vision, wireless casting. And under system optimization, you have the power modes there. So you can see your battery life and things too. Drive management, you can scan to see the health of the system and there are driver updates. Now, I wanted to point out here that this performance mode, I'm running for all of the benchmarks you see, all of the gaming. So it's increasing the power limit. So it's up to 70 watts. And it's normally on this smart mode. That's by default. Now, if you unplug it, then it will not be able to run the high performance mode. I'll just demonstrate. So as soon as I pull out that Type-C cable, it switches then to the smart mode and it's not gonna let me swap over no matter what I do. The Honor Magic Book 14 does have those downwards firing speakers on the underside that I showed you at the beginning of this video, but how do they sound? Well, here's a sample at 100%. They're not bad for a 14 inch laptop speakers overall. There's a bit of bass to them and the volume is good. And this is our webcam. So now you know exactly what to expect out of it. Well, it's nothing amazing, as you can tell from this quality. It's 720p, and it is at least 30 frames per second. So as I move my hand up and down, it's not all choppy, the motion like this, at least, if you tend to move a little bit with your webcams when you talk. And the audio that you are listening to, of course, is being recorded by those built-in microphones. So the two dual ray mics that are just in front of the touchpad. What about 4K 60 decoding? This is something that comes up quite a bit because a lot of systems will drop frames, but we have the Nvidia graphics here and I'm in Chrome. Hopefully the performance should be good. So I'm just gonna hit play there and I will enable those stats. You can see that drop frames. Oh, okay, 43 and it's occasionally dropping frames here. So I think this is more of a Chrome problem than the actual PC here. So it's steadying out. It looks like it's stable now. Look, it's occasionally dropping frames. So this is pretty good. Look, just now and then it's going to drop a frame or two, which is quite standard for Chrome. Now, this is where that GPU really comes in handy. So having the CUDA cores handling this instead of the Iris XE graphics from Intel, it's just so much better with the playback in the timeline of Adobe Premiere Pro 2022. So if you're doing 3D work, 3D editing work, CAD work, video editing, and then the light gaming as well. This is where you really do need that GPU, especially for this. So the performance of the timeline, scrubbing your head, everything, the playback, so much better than the integrated graphics. It's very fluid, and I really don't have any problems with it at all. It's good. So let's take a look at the export times now that we have the NVIDIA graphics. I have here the YouTube preset, so that's 4K that's going to export one minute of footage. This is the test I do across all of my laptop reviews. So here we go, start and then export. This should be very quick. And you can see the load is mostly on that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2050 and the Iris XE, well, that's about 50% there. So they're both working together and it's ripping through this, encoding that so quick. That is crazy fast. So there we go. That was about, you could say probably about 20 seconds, maybe even 19 because of my delay to hit start on this timer. So really good performance. You do really notice that RTX 2050 with its dedicated four gigabytes of DDR6 RAM. And onto a little bit of gaming performance. This is Cyberpunk 2077. We're getting up to about 50 frames per second. Now 1080p is uh, not a demanding resolution at all, so it's handling it all right. Now if you wanted a better frame rate, you could lower it down to 720p of course. And I do have it set to the low settings. That's why you're not seeing a lot of traffic because the population density, I mean that's, that's right down and the view distance and everything else. So even a demanding game like this is gonna be okay. So a little bit of light gaming, it's not a high-end GPU, not even mid-range, just this low-end from NVIDIA. So, of course, it's not their best, 
but I'll just test out a couple more games just to give you an idea of what you can expect gaming wise on the Magic Book 14. And now GTA here, so this is on high settings, you can see we're getting a good frame rate, always over 100 frames per second. Performance looks great, and it's what I would expect out of a dedicated card like this with uh, RTX 2050 graphics, similar performance to an RTX uh, 3050, They're similar, but this of course is a lower clocked version, but it's got the same chip in it basically. So looking very, very good here. And lastly, The Witcher 3, 1080p, medium settings looking very good. So this is over 100 frames per second. Occasionally I've seen it dip down to 80, but good performance. So if you stick to 1080p, perhaps lower the settings down with some of the more demanding games. It is a laptop at 14 inches that can also be, well, pretty much a little gaming laptop and our thermals and the fan noise. So it will spike, you can see here, up to 100 degrees Celsius on the CPU. So it does pull a lot of power up to 120 watts from that Core i5 12th gen. Now when it hits 101, this is only for a few seconds as the fans ramp up, it then drops the temperatures down. Now an example of that is right here too. If I just bring this up, this was when it was under load with Cinebench, you'll see that while it was going through the 10 minute benchmark three minutes into it, the temperatures were about 71. So that's when it's at the high RPMs. The fan noise, yes, you do hear it a little bit. Okay, so it's not gonna be super ultra quiet when you are pushing it very hard. And the keyboard in the middle does get up to around about 45, 46 degrees. So a little hot there, but considering how small it is, how thin it is, the power that this laptop packs into it, I don't think this is bad at all. I think it's quite good actually. So it doesn't get up to 50 degrees like I've seen with some laptops on the keyboard or above it. The palm rest and the touchpad do remain always cool to the touch. Then battery life, how is it? Well, 75 watt hour battery, it's not actually too bad. If you keep on the integrated graphics that is, you can get up to an over eight hours. That's at 30% brightness, light documents, spreadsheets, office kind of work, normal stuff there. Anything that's really demanding, and if you're especially using that RTX 2050, then the battery life absolutely plummets because it can pull up to 60 watts and if you game on it or you're editing videos using that dedicated GPU, then the time drops down to two and a half, two hours, 40 minutes or so. It's not good. Now Linux support, just wanted to quickly mention it that I booted up Linux Manjaro. It's working, okay? The touchpad's working, wireless and everything. And the screen's not a touch screen, so there's no issue there with touch drivers for it, which is good. So I really like this little laptop. I think it's got so much going for it. It's got the ports. It has a very fast charge rate. It's got decent battery life. It's got a really good backlit keyboard, a nice touch pad. The screen, well, it's only 319 nits. Could be a little bit brighter. And then of course the dedicated GPU and that power from the Core i5, the 12500H. A 12 core, 16 thread, well, monster in this form factor is really good. So if you're someone that needs a laptop with a dedicated GPU and it's for just video editing and on the go, you need something compact, portable, good build quality, this is it. This really is it. It's, it's a fantastic laptop. The cons, well, some of them are nitpicky kind of things. Uh, one of them is, well, it's a glass display, but it doesn't have touch. We don't have Thunderbolt 4 with this, sadly. I guess the licensing fee for it would have pushed the price up too much, and that's why they decided that, hey, no, we won't actually give it Thunderbolt 4. And there is no option to order this with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. That would have been really good for those that need more than 16. There'd probably be a few people in the comments who will say, oh, if only it had 32. Because when you edit a lot of videos, some of those programs, especially Adobe Premiere Pro that I use, can really eat into the RAM. So I did run into sometimes with my video edits, uh, the, the RAM was a bit borderline there too for some of the work I, even I was doing. So that's just the, the cons there. And well, a SD card reader would have been good on this too as well. But hey, again, that's kind of nitpicking there. Overall, fantastic 14 inch laptop with a huge amount of power for the size. It's really good and it does get a big Thumbs up from me and comes recommended. If this is what you're after, dedicated GPU, small size, Windows 11, this is it. 
So thanks a lot for watching this review of the Magic Book 14. I do have a review of the Honor 70 that just launched as well, the global version, and the Honor Pad 8, which is an affordable Android 12 tablet from Honor.